Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Jonathan McKnight, pastor of Sanctuary of Praise Ministries in this beautiful city, Orlando, Florida. Thank you for tuning in this morning. When Eagles Gather, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. I'm excited to have you join with us today. I'm speaking blessings. We're believing that God's going to give us an amazing word today. We're speaking of blessings, peace, protection, safety, and covering over your homes. I want you to let your friends and neighbors know that we're now getting ready to share a great word of God to you and believing that great things are going to happen. I'm just believing that God is bringing you out, you and your family is turning situations around. And I'm just believing that I fully understand. I fully know that God has us in his hands. And with that being said, we have faith, we have prayer, we have praise, and we are believing God. I'm believing a shifting in the season, a shifting in the atmosphere. We getting ready to start out with this beautiful service on today. We getting ready to share with you I believe that it's time for a miracle and we get ready to start out with some house praise, some house church. You get ready with none other than Pastor Beverly Crawford. She's getting ready to say it's about time for a miracle. You got about four hot minutes to get on your feet or pat your feet and clap your hands and give God some praise right where you are. I believe that it's about time for a miracle. Beverly Crawford is going to let us praise God with it's about time for a miracle.
know, I know, and I know we know it's about time for a miracle. I know some of you still patting your feet. You're still doing your dance. I'm excited about thank Pastor Beverly Crawford for letting us have the atmosphere of church in our house and having our praise break. I believe and I know that it's about time for a miracle. I want to share with you. I'm getting ready to go to the word of God. We're getting ready before that to have a word of prayer and one more worship song. But I just want you to know this, that I want you to do one thing for me right now. I want you just to take a moment and just breathe. I just want you to take a moment and just trust God and know that God has us, our lives, our country, our nation, and this world in his hands. And I'm getting ready to pray with you and pray for you that God will give you, your family, everything that you need and believe that God will give your friends or so many people right now have so many different types of requests for so many different situations. So right now we're getting ready to go to the throne of grace and get ready to use God's ample answer. And that's prayer and faith in his word as we get ready to pray with you now. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy, for you are good, you're God, and you're worthy to be praised. There's nobody like you in all the earth, and we're grateful unto you right now. Thank you for letting us see another day, waking us up this morning and starting us in our right mind. Thank you now for watching over us all night last night. And we bless your holy name for who you are. You're an amazing God and you're doing amazing things because even though when we don't understand every situation, we still are trusting you for miracles. Thank you for divine provision and divine help. We pray right now, God, that souls will be saved and hearts will be changed and turned back to you. Protect those who are sick, those who are afflicted, those who are fighting, those who don't know which way to go, know, know what to turn to. We know that all of our help comes from you. We bind every satanic plan, every demonic interruption. We bind every violating spirit of the enemy and we decree and we declare right now God that there's victory through this message and victory through this time I pray for those who are broken those who are confused those who are helpless those who are homeless we pray now for those who are assisting oh God many people in getting help in hospitals and nursing homes and clinics and in and, and hospice and all over this world wherever uh, God places are set up to be able to help those in need I pray now for our government we pray now for our military troops. We pray now for all medical staff. And we thank you right now, God, that you're good and you're worthy to be praised. We pray, God, for this latter revival, that the outpouring of your Holy Spirit will saturate each one of us to where we will see your hand move and the glory be revealed like never before. We ask you to bless this word. It's getting ready to come forth. And we thank you right now that it's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. I'm getting ready to go to the word of God. But right before we do this, an amazing uh, worship leader, man of God, powerful songwriter, awesome musician. He does so many things to help so many people. Uh, Myron Williams is getting ready to take us into a few moments of worship. Um, I just love the way God uses him in worship. And we're getting ready to have Myron Williams um, let us know that God is all we need and then once he finishes that worship, I'm going to go to the word of God. And if you decree and declare that God is going to do great things. So Myron Williams is getting ready to let us know you alone are all I need. And he controls our destiny. So let's worship with Myron Williams. You alone are all I need. Oh, 
are all I need. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. In you alone, I am complete. Now, if you know He completes you, come on and give Him worship right now. Listen. And there is no more, and no more of you. Oh, and then you melt my eyes, melt my defenses, and over and over, and call me your friend. Yes, you do. Now I'm back in your arms again. Everything's all right. What would I do without you, Jesus? Because I depend on you so much that I cannot make it without you. I'm back in your Now I'm back in your Again. Come on, if he's all you need, sing this song with us. Are you You hold my destiny. I tell you what, Myra Williams, you bless me every time I hear that worship song. I want to say to every one of you right now that our life is in the hand of God. It's nothing about your title. It's nothing about my name. It's nothing about your name. It's about the fact that we know he's our source. He's our strength. God is our deliverer. He's our power. He's our peace. He's my sanity. He is my answer. He's your answer. And I'm telling you something. We need him like we never needed him before. And we got to trust him when we can't trace him. We got to believe him when we don't even know what he's doing. We got to know that he's there even when it seems like he's not really talking to us. And we got to understand that sometimes when you're going through life, you have to make it up in your mind that you're going to stand on God's promises, that you're going to stand on God's word, that you're going to trust him when it seems like maybe your prayers are going to the ceiling and coming right back down. You got to know that he has a hand that is not short, that it cannot save. He has an ear that is out, it's in a situation where you're not out of his distance. You're not out of his presence. I'm getting ready to go to the word of God. I just feel God's power and anointing and and I'm just going to give you a, an impactful few minutes of what God has given me to give to you today. Because in this state, in this season where we are now, we got to make a decree. We got to make a statement. We got to make a declaration over our own destiny, our own future. Let me go to the word of God from Luke, the 15th chapter. I might begin reading from you from verse seven. The word of the Lord says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? 
And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have law found the peace by which I've lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I want to read verse 9 again. And again, when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. I want to deal with a subject just for a few moments. It's called, I refuse to lose it. I refuse to lose it. Um, I don't believe there's anyone up under the sound of my voice um, who has not lost something in life. Um, some of us have lost jobs. Some of us have lost relationships. Some of us have lost money. Some of us have lost peace. We lost joy. Uh, we lost different things. We've lost our energy. We've lost our praise, unfortunately. We lost maybe our prayer life. There's something that we lost. We, we just lost something. And, and many times when things are lost among people, uh, the accountability of what we lost, we want to oftentimes blame others uh, for what we lost. And God has made it so to where um, he has individualized power as well as opportunity for us to go back and find things that we lost. One of the greatest situations is how can I serve God or how can I function in this season? And when it seems like I'm referencing uh, power, but actually my spirit is bankrupt. I'm, I'm acting as if though it all is well, it's all is good. But deep down uh, inside of me, I'm trying not to lose it. And I'm trying not to lose me. I'm trying not to lose my sanity. I'm trying not to lose my peace. There's things that has happened in life, uh, maybe even from your childhood and you lost your zeal, you lost your goals, you lost your motivation, you lost your esteem, something you lost. Maybe things happen in your life and you just don't feel significant anymore. You don't feel um, attractive anymore. You don't feel pretty anymore. You don't feel strong anymore. You just, you just, life seems to be kind of taking something out of you. And what makes loss even greater in many cases is the fact that sometimes you ask yourself the question, would it have been better if I never had it than to lose it? If, would it have been better if I never encountered it? That's why a lot of times, unfortunately, people can't handle losing things. Things. People can't handle losing things because their image, their goals, their dreams was about things and that when things are lost or when the market crashes or when you lose the job, the job meant so much to you. It was actually your God. It, um, you know, Mark, you had planned that when by such and such a date, I'm going to retire and then a depression or then the market crash or then here comes a virus. Here comes something that causes me to lose my momentum or I was on pace. I had just a few more weeks or a few more years or a few more months. I had said by now I'll be here and this will be able to happen and that should be able to happen. I'll have enough for my kids. I'm building a legacy. And then something happens to challenge you to see if you're going to act as if though um, you could never recover. And many times we go through life and uh, we lose things by allowing the opinions of non-contributors. It amazes me. I'm, one of the greatest things in life that amazes me is this, is how we give weight and credence 
uh, to so many people opinions of what they think about you. They didn't make you. They didn't create you. They haven't been there the whole time of your life. But then you put so much weight. People will appraise you unscheduledly. People will decide what you're worth and they don't even check with God to see what he has planned for you. Your value is not determined by uh, your popularity. Your value is not determined by a platform. Your value is not determined by whether you own the pulpit or whether you in the pew or whether you in the church or just whether you in the chair. Your value is determined by what God says about you, what God has spoken about you and what you believe and work towards what God has said about you. And I want to start out right now. I want to deal with people who've just lost it. And when I say lost it, it's not that I'm talking about from a psychological place. I'm talking about actually just lost drive, just lost motivation, just lost, um, you know, that energy, that momentum, because things seem like you got a pump that fills you on one side of you and something else that drains you on the other side of you. And right now your life is out of balance. Right now there's an unbalance in your life. Um, you start out in the morning. It's a great morning, good morning. And by the afternoon, you're just like angry. And you, 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 you feel as if though that your, your life is unstable. The Bible says a double-minded man in the book of James is unstable in all his ways because one day we believe God. One moment we believe God. One, one God is wonderful. God is awesome. And then a couple of things happens. And now the process the process of life literally goes and takes you through some seasons of your life. And it seems as if though God is angry. Why is it that every time I go through a test or every time we go through a trial, we automatically think that the devil is winning, the enemy is winning, or is it perhaps that God is angry with you when actually he, the Bible says he, he loves those who he loves, he chastens or he allows them to be processed or pruned or he began to cut back some things so that more fruit can come past. I'm in John 15 now. And oftentimes when you're going through life, it seems like one of the greatest things that you can deal with or go through is when you can do what it takes to keep and not lose you. There's so much unfulfilled purpose in life. Um, there's so much unfulfilled destiny. I'll never forget um, in my life when I was uh, one of the greatest men, um, God bless him and God bless his wife, um, of destiny and purpose that taught about purpose and taught about destiny and fulfillment of life was none other than Dr. Miles Monroe, a phenomenal preacher, teacher, and author. He wrote some of the most amazing books on purpose and destiny. And one thing that he used to say is one thing I want to do is I want to, if I leave this earth, I want to die empty. I don't want to have um, any more purpose or destiny. I want to I want to leave this earth knowing that I've done everything I could to fulfill those parts of me and and so many times, you know, one of the things that he said was he said that when you walk through a cemetery, there's so much unfulfilled purpose. There's so many things that cause people to be distracted, so many things that cause people to be lost and feel unfulfilled and now they depressed and now they oppressed. And we just don't know how things begin to happen because, yes, I have on my makeup. Yes, I have on my nice suit and tie. But the truth of the matter is I'm in a situation to where empty and some part of me because of some test or some process um, has drained and I've lost part of me. I want to tell you something, first of all, that every problem and every test does not mean that it's a penalty from God. To get back to Dr. Miles Monroe, I'll never forget uh, when I was able to attend uh, his homegoing celebration um, as a representative of Trinity Broadcast Network. And I'll never forget um, when I was in the cemetery on that evening that was a dark evening. I will never forget this in my life. And it was thousands of people that was in um, the, the, the burial place for him and his wife and and it was on a cliff and it was and people had out their cell phones and the lights were uh, shining within the cemetery the lights were shining in a dark place and purpose 
uh, of his life was still being celebrated in a dark place. And one of the things that he said is, is that the greatest thing you can do if you want God to get the glory out of your life is to make sure that you fulfill your purpose and your destiny and don't function in the hypocrisy one of the things I believe that people do a lot of times is they function in the hypocrisy and rather than finding themselves and rather than finding the piece of them that's missing, they rather give life and performance than find what is actually missing in life. And you find what is going on in your life and you try to function in the in-betweens. I call it the function of the in-betweens, in between truth and reality, I lost something. In between, um, from the beginning of the relationship and how it ended, I lost a part of me. Between uh, the bad financial decision, uh, I lost a part of me. Between the wrong associations, I've lost some of me. Between allowing my past to contaminate my future, I lost part of me to let my gift just lie in me dormant. And I know there's more to me than what I'm showing, but I let people talk me out of trying. I let people talk me out of believing in myself. I lost part of me when I let someone get me upset and I decide I'm not going to be in the choir. I'm not going to serve God no more. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to leave ministry. I lost part of me between dealing with the fact that everybody's not going to like you, that everybody's not going to... Um, accept you and you found yourself being so needy just so needy until you've given the opinions of people the power to take away your momentum and your drive in life i lost part of me when i got fired off the job i lost part of me when 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 my family uh, said things about me i lost part of me when someone decided that they did not want something anymore I lost part of me when I went through the divorce I lost part of me when when my when I lost a child I lost part of me when I lost my friends I lost part of me notice notice something I haven't said yet um, when I lost my relationship or I lost focus on God I lost part of me when this virus came and my life became so chaotic and it seems like I was so counting on my system. I was so counting on every two weeks I'm gonna get this. I was so counting on Friday night I'm going out, I'm hitting the club, Saturday I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm gonna do my thing, I'm so glad. Then after I finish going to the club, I'm going to Waffle House, I'm gonna get me some waffles, I'm gonna get me a pecan waffle, I'm gonna go to IHOP and get me some pancakes, I'm gonna go by and get me some wings so used to my life but I found out that I don't even know how to function now because God has allowed there to be a change in my life and I can no longer blame others for not being spiritually strong because now I got time that I never thought I would have the world has changed my life has changed but I still got a problem my problem is that I lost one of the most important things. I lost a part of me. I gave me over to others who didn't know how to handle me, who didn't know how to value me, didn't see my worth, didn't understand that God had a plan for my life. I lost part of me. But I got to make a decision. I have to make a decree. I have to take my life back into action. I have to make it known that it's not over until God says it's over. I have to make it known that if I walk in the room and no one wants to speak, it's okay because I have to understand that if I go to the worship in church and no one wants to uh, say anything about how my hair look, my suit, my tie, my dress, my shoes, if I'm not complimented by man, I'm still not confused by God because he's already told me that I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. And he said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. I know that I'm trying to function in the in-betweens. I'm, I'm trying to survive until I get to 
my Canaan, but right now my Exodus, right now the bondage, the chains, the shutters and the feathers and the things that's blocking me from seeing, the things that's blocking me from knowing, the things when I've actually become a life performer. I'm actually living for others. I'm living for others to like me. I'm living for others to love me. But in the midst of trying to get people who don't even like themselves to like me, I'm at a deficit because I'm losing part of me slowly. The depression didn't come overnight. The oppression didn't come overnight. The heaviness and the losing sleep did not come overnight. It was a process, a process of this happened and then that happened. And then I had to fight this and then I had to fight that. And then I had to fight this and then that betrayal and then that mistake and then that bad decision and then this and then that and then this and then that and then this and that and this and that. And now I'm in a cycle and I'm trying to function. I got a smile, but deep down inside of me, I'm heavy, I'm broken. And I don't want to tell nobody I'm broken because I don't know who to trust with my brokenness. I don't even know if anybody can handle the real you or the real me. Because so many times when we walk in church, there's this mirage, there's this external uh, outfit. You know, people have on multiple outfits when we come to church. We have on a natural outfit and then we have on a spiritual outfit. Because right now, when you've really been broken, you got to put up this facade. You got to put up these layers so no one can get to the real you. We got to put up these layers so no one, because really, I'm sitting and I'm I'm telling people, I'm high-fiving them. Well, we ain't high-fiving right now and we ain't telling our neighbor too much especially if our neighbor try to cough we ain't saying to nothing to our neighbor right now we just want to see if God is there but really to get back to it we're we we're living in a box we're living in a box and we're living in a shell and we're living in a facade and and we're walking around knowing that parts of us are missing but we can't let you know that because we don't know how are you going to handle the puzzle of our life? We don't know if the jigsaw puzzle is too much to try to put it together piece by piece. We don't know if you can handle the fact that I lost something. I lost something when it seems as if though people you count on the most, those are the ones who quickly let you down. And now you said, oh, I ain't worried about it. It didn't hurt. Yes, it did didn't hurt because you lay down at night thinking about it. It did hurt because your tears will come out all of a sudden when you think about it. Yes, it did hurt. And your defense system is actually to fool you. You're actually in denial of who you really are. But there's a story that I want to talk to you about for a few moments. And I won't talk about that much. But there's a story that I want to talk to you about in the Bible about a woman. A woman in the text that this woman represents a lot of people today in this message um, that she she lost something and she she lost it but she lost it in her house she couldn't blame no one for losing it because she had it the good part about this story that I start out is the fact that she knew she lost it and the Bible says she had 10 pieces of silver and now she had nine. And but sometimes when we go through life, it's, it's amazing to me that some people would have been just satisfied with 90 percent. Some people will say, you know what? Losing one is not that bad. But I'm coming to talk to you and coming to let you know that there's nothing that's uh, mediocre about you. There's nothing that you need to settle. So many people settle and they compromise because we're actually competing against someone else that has 80. We're actually competing against someone that has 70. We're actually uh, talking about the person that has 30, 50, or 20, maybe the person that have 10s, and now you're feeling significant because you have nine pieces of silver when someone else has his three, has three, and now you don't even understand that God never wanted you to just have partial fulfillment. God never wanted you to be able to live your life on a daily basis and you only accomplish 90% of your purpose because you got somebody next to you. See, Pookie ain't hating on Ray Ray because Ray Ray got nine and Pookie, you know, 
got 10 and and vice versa. One got 10 and one got nine. We're not measuring ourselves by others who refuse to lose it, who refuse to take accountability for where they are in their life. And yes, there are so many reasons, and I'm not trying to discredit things that have happened from our life and from our childhood. And many people started out in situations that were abusive and started out in situations, mental abuse, uh, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. There's so many people that started out with, at a deficit. You just didn't start out right. You, you look like you started life at a deficit and it looks like you'll never get yourself back because you never knew yourself. You don't even really know you. You're trying to discover the things in life. And every time you find out a part of yourself that you think is cool, that you think is OK, then you find a different preference in life that now you're not OK or you're you're not whole and you're not healed and you're not well because somebody's trying to get you to just appreciate a part of you and not all of you. God sent me here today to talk to some people to restructure your thinking, to fertilize your spirit to where not being whole is not enough, to where you say, yes, I fell down, but I'm going to get up. I, I'm an eagle. You know, this is when eagles gather. I have some broken wings. I, I, I got some missing feathers, but I'm still going to fly. I still believe that God has time for me to be able to walk in my complete destiny and purpose. Matter of fact, I still have time. The Lord told me to say this to you, and I'm going to look you right in this camera. And I'm going to say to you right now, there is still time for you to be happy. But you got to take some steps. You got to make it up in your mind. First of all, you got to come out of your 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 denial and the reality that the best of me is not showing yet. And I've lost some things. Notice pastor didn't lose it. Husband didn't lose it. Wife didn't lose it. Children didn't lose it. Co-workers didn't lose it. Families didn't use it. I lost it. Because I allowed others to take it. Many times you have allowed others to deprive you of the unexpected favor that God has for you because they talk you out of your goals and they talk you out of your dreams. One day that lady decided that I refused to lose it. 90% of me is not is not good enough. I I, I, I refuse to lose the creativity and the innovativeness by which God has deposited in me. There are gifts and talents in you that are undiscovered or that you are being arrested by fear or being arrested by, you know, the opinions of others. But I hear the Lord say, I'm going to I'm going to allow you to take some steps so you will not lose it. You will not compromise with being partially happy. You're going to be complete. You're going to be whole, but you got to take some steps. So the first step in not losing it is understand that it's lost. A lot of people lift their hands. They hold their hands in church and they give God praise. And I'm telling you, some people that have spoken tongues so long, they know how to speak in tongues, even if the spirit ain't doing it. It's, it's formality. And so many times when we're in ministry or kingdom, I've been around church all my life. Um, I say around it. I didn't say in it all my life. I've been around the church all my life and I see the religiosity. I see the tradition. I see people go through the motions. I see people looking at people moving when God is being still. I'll say it again. I look at it when people are moving, but God is being still. I hear it when people are talking, but God ain't saying nothing. And sometimes we got to understand that the formality of tradition oftentimes will bring us in a point of bondage by which we have learned how to go through the motions, but we are so empty. We're so broken. So step number one, I have to take accountability that all of me is not showing. My full potential is not there. I have to take accountability that God made me in his image and in his likeness. And, and he's, he's not constraining me. I have to make it up in my mind that I'm not just going to sit home and wait on a stimulus check I'm not going to sit home and wait and watch the news all day as if though 
God hasn't given me time to plan and to strategically deposit in me the next move. I believe this move is God giving us time to have a break before we get restarted. I believe that God, number one, is making us admit that something's missing. So I got to make it up in my mind that I got to come out of the denial of that something is missing. I'm not at my best. Step number two is I got to light a candle. My God, I got to ask God for the revelation back. I got to ask God for, you know, sometimes what we call revelation. I hear people preach a lot. A lot of times what we call revelation is actually information. We done dissected four or five different messages. We don't even people, even in the prophetic, they heard somebody else prophesy something and now they prophesying the same thing. That's not what God wants. God wants light. God wants light and the light, first of all, must be in your heart. That's why David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. We need the light of God. First of all, we got to understand that we need the light of new vision. We need the, the light to be able to see it from God's eyes and not our own opinion. Most people miss God because they too quickly get in their emotions. Most people miss God because they think God is in your feelings. God is in his word. You got to get your feelings out of your feelings and get in God's word because whatever God says about it, that's what it's going to be. So we got to light our houses. We got to bring light to our homes. We got to bring light because it's in there. You just don't see it because you're looking at it from a dark place. You're looking at it from a gloomy place. You're looking at it from a dark perspective. You're looking at it from the eyes of fear. You're looking at it through anxiety. You can't see how many of you've ever walked in a room. You've been up under so much stress. You lost your keys. You lost your keys. The keys in the house. You matter of fact, you locked the door. You came out the car and you locked the keys in the house but because you such in a panic state you're looking for the keys with the light on the keys right on the dresser but your panic your stress your anxiety is making you not see what's really there and then all of a sudden you call somebody else hey you see my keys they say what you talking about do i see your keys your keys right on the dresser that's because you were looking without light you was looking without hope. You was looking at without expectation. You want God to answer you, but God wants you to turn the light on. God wants you to get back in revelation. God wants you to get back in the light of worship, in the light of prayer, in the light of his word. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So what he's really saying is if you're going to see properly, you got to let me be that light bulb that has the power that I'm, I'm self-powered. The word of God is self-powered. Jesus is self-powered. We need to plug into the light. So the first thing she had to do is admit that she lost something. Second thing she had to do is she had to get a candle and light up her house. So if it was light, if she needed to light the room and light the house, that means there was some darkness in place. We have to deal with those. those if we're going to not lose ourselves, we got to deal with those places of us. We got to deal with those private demons. We got to deal with those secret struggles. We have to deal we have to deal with what's keeping us from not seeing what we lost. So first, you have to understand that something's missing. My best is not here. My best is not showing. My creativity is not showing. I have to make sure that I first admit to God, it's not my neighbor, it's not the pastor. Is not the deacon, the mother, the saints, the friends, the worship team, not my husband, not my wife, not my kids, not my job. I gotta deal with me. I gotta deal with what's missing in me because I cannot help fulfill you when I won't take the time to help complete me. So I have to make sure that something's missing. One, number two, I have to understand it's too many dark people around my life. It's too many people that speak negative. It's too many people that speak uh, about others. It's too many people that's keeping up with mess and keeping up with drama. There's too many people that's too critical. There's too many people that's too emotional. Too many people that's too judgmental. I got to turn the light on. And, and I got to ask God to give me discernment to see the hearts of who's around me, to see the plan of God, to understand that the greatest season that we in is a season of right connections. I can't I 
can't embark upon situations to where everybody around me hating on somebody else. Everybody got viciousness and venom in their mouth, in their thoughts. The Bible says we got to cast down every wicked imagination. We got to pull down every stronghold, everything that exalts itself against the mind of God. We got to bring that things up under captivity. We can't. The Bible says whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. If there'll be any virtue, if there'll be any praise, he says, you got to know how to think on these things. So I got to find myself. I got to turn that light on. You got to turn the light on and you can't turn a light on if you don't have forgiveness. Unforgiveness keeps the light on. Jealousy keeps the, the light from coming on. You you in a dark place when you are envious of someone else, when you're jealous of someone else. And sometimes it amazes me how God shows some people everything but their own missing pieces so in saying that the first thing I told you come out of denial the second thing is you got to <laughs> turn the light on the third thing is I find interesting the Bible says and she swept she swept not many made not the maid she swept she swept the house because she knew what was in the house, I need to sweep it because if I find it, I'll value it. I lost it, I have to find it. You can't just blame your leadership. You just can't blame your church. You just can't blame your pastor, your priest, your prophet, your first lady, the worship team. You can't blame the worship team for not being in worship. You can't blame the pastor for not preaching the word. You got your own Bible. What you need to do is dust it off and unfold those scriptures that are stuck together. You got to find it. You have to sweep. You have to turn the light on and you have to sweep it yourself and become accountable for your own spiritual strength. And yes, we are here to strengthen one another. But Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, his whole prayer team fell asleep. But he had to die for you and me on his own and sometimes we have to make sure that we sweep right now when we're in our houses it's a it's a perfect time to start going through old stuff and throwing away what needs to be thrown away and emptying out what's irrelevant anymore and 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 even boxing some stuff oh some of y'all not getting ready to like me I feel I can tell when people are gonna have a problem with what I'm getting ready to say because I feel it in my spirit uh, some of some of us got to go head on and, and box up some of that stuff you know I got I got some I got some shirts um, I got some shirts I need to box up and sew I got some I got some stuff um, that I need to just give it away or sew it away because you know you know that size be not anymore did y'all just catch what I just said? That size be not anymore. Unless I'm going to go back to that, then then I need to make it up in my mind that God has given me time to do spring, fall, yearly cleaning. Let me tell you what happened to me the other day, and then I'll close this out. Happened to me actually a few days ago. I, yeah, actually, yesterday this happened to me. Um, I was cleaning, going through some stuff while I got all this time because I'm really trying not to suffer from claustrophobia. I'm, you know, I'm just not the type of person that just can just sit in walls because I feel like I'm, you know, life is just wasting away. And, uh, you know, you don't know how long you're going to be here. And some of us, you know, we are industrious. We we like the air. I was born in the country. We didn't we didn't have ACs starting out. You know, we used to heist up the window with a screen and just hope nothing fly in the house. I was a country boy. And uh, fresh air was always what we done. Played outside, worked outside, and did everything outside. And um, the other day I was just um, going through, the Lord said, start going through some old paperwork and just start going through some things. And that was there. And, and I had an amazing day. I'm telling you, it was phenomenal. I went through one stack of stuff and, and, and I was going through things, you know, mail and going through some cards, some cards that were given unto me. And I went to this one card and picked up this envelope and when I picked up the envelope from a card, a hundred dollar bill came out. I said, God, the hundred dollar bill was in the card. I went through a little plastic bag, was going through receipts and and I, I found a hundred dollars. You know, I I had I had some praise now. And then I went through another bag and I found 
a, 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 a receipt that was balled up from Publix, unfolded the receipt, and and twenty two dollars. I guess I just put the money in the, the receipt and just ball them through in the bag. It must have been in a rush, in a rush, in a rush. But when I went through the bag, clearing it out to throw some things away, when I was sweeping, there was increase in the sweep. I found twenty two dollars. And this is really what blew my mind. I'm going through some other stuff and and you know, my son, you know, he graduated from high school a couple of you know, years ago, 2018, son graduated from high school, you know, and, you know, had this event for him. And and uh, he must have he must have, you know, opened the card and um, the card and just must have let left the card in, in a stack of things. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going through this old stuff. I said, oh, my goodness, my son's card. And congratulations, 2018. And, and I'm getting ready to just put the card. The, the, the Spirit of God said, open that card. I opened the card, and there's two $50 bills that was in the house from 2018. And from 2018, and the card that I opened was from 2019 that I thought I had opened the cards, but there was a $100 bill in that card, and then there was two $50 bills from 2018 from my son. I want you to think about what I just said. I wouldn't have found that if I didn't sweep. And um, I, I said, my goodness. Now, y'all know, I must tell you, I kept sweeping. I won't tell you I kept sweeping. I, 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 I started looking through everything. I was like, Lord, if I'm sweeping like this, I, I done found $222. And I, I, I said to my son, I said, son, you, 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 you didn't go through all of your cards. Uh, and he, you didn't go through all of your cards. And, um, and um, I found one of your graduation cards. And. And, and you you left two $50 bills, $100 was in the car. And my son had, had heard a message that I had just preached, and, he, and the name of the message was, um, it's not the platform, it's his presence. He started praying, talking about, oh, God, Dad, it's not the platform, it's his presence. He said, I'm glad you cleaned. You got to catch what I just said. There's some stuff in your house. There's some stuff that you're housing. You got to sweep so you can find some things. There's some treasures inside of you. There's some there's some there's some gifts inside of you. There's some power inside of you. There's something missing inside of you. But you got to sweep. You you have to decide that I want this so bad that I refuse to lose it. I'm not I don't even know what my best me is yet. I, I really feel like this about myself and I'm going to be transparent with you and I'm going to I'm going to let this go. I don't believe my best you has come forward yet. I don't believe the best Jonathan McKnight is, is being revealed right now. I believe that you and I must be honest with ourselves to say there's more to me than what I'm showing. And it's, it's good to have nine pieces, but God wanted me to have ten. He wanted me complete. He wanted me whole. But he wanted me to sweep. He Notice what the woman done. When she swept her house... Notice what she done. She came out of denial and say something's missing. Number two, she lit a candle. She had to get a heart right. She had to put more light in the house. She couldn't operate in darkness. And the third thing, she swept the house. Now, obviously, she was in the neighborhood. Obviously, she had next door neighbors. She had friends. Because the Bible says she said to her friends, after she had found what she lost, isolation. Quarantine, social distancing. I'll say it again. Isolation, quarantine, social distancing. After she made it up in my mind, her mind, that you know what? I'm not going to have a gathering. I'm not going to, to have an association of, of having a bunch of people in my space until I'm whole, until I'm complete. There's so many times the reason why relationships uh, don't work and I say this often to my church that which I pastor uh, which God loves and we love God and I say to them all the time you even when it comes to relationships even when it comes to marriage 
you can't have two half people trying to make a whole relationship. You cannot have two people who are incomplete that's trying to be complete through someone else. You got to take the responsibility that I got to be at my best. You have to take the responsibility that I need to get me right. I need to get me together. I need I need to be complete before I ask others to rejoice with me. You know, we rejoicing incomplete. We're rejoicing and we're perpetrating and many times we we front and Oh, this is my 100 message. I'm keeping this 100. I'm coming, as we like to say in my neighborhood, I'm coming straight for the jugular, dealing truth. And the truth of the matter is this, is I'll never be complete without God. I'll never be whole without him. But I have responsibility that I refuse to lose it. I refuse to take this year and go all year this year and don't do what I need to do to make sure that I myself have given God my best, I've given him my best worship, my best praise. I'm going to represent him so I can be a witness to others that you can be tore up from the floor up. You can be jacked up. You can be made some mistakes. You can be uh, been through some hardship, been through some times. But if you just keep sweeping, if you just keep saying I refuse to lose me you are the most valuable thing that you can offer God when you make it up in your mind that in you I live in you I move and in you I have my being not perfect got flaws got issues but I'm gonna keep sweeping Made some bad decisions, made some bad mistakes, but I'm not going to keep sweeping. Got some struggles. Had some hardship. Had some folk that just flat done me wrong, but I'm not going to keep sweeping. I challenge you today. I challenge you right now to say with me three times, I'm not going to lose me. I'm not going to lose me. I am not going to lose me. The enemy has been trying to break some people up under the sound of my voice, spirit. Because if he can break your spirit, he can break your dreams. If he can break your spirit, he can break your will. If he can break your spirit, he can break your desire for God. But you have to say, I refuse to lose it. That happened, not going to lose it. This person done that, not going to lose it. Satan tried to do this, not going to lose it. Don't have a job, still won't lose it. Business is closed, still won't lose it. Church is closed, still not going to lose it. Food is low, not going to lose it. Virus is going crazy, not going to lose it. I know the tow truck looking for my car, not going to lose it. Can't go shopping, not going to lose it. Can't get my hair done, not going to lose it. Can't get my nails done, not going to lose it. Can't watch the NBA, not going to lose it. Can't watch the NFL, not going to lose it. Can't go to the movie, not going to lose it. Can't go to the club or bar, shouldn't have never went no way, not going to lose it. The most important thing in your life is God, you, your family, your purpose your destiny, and your spiritual assignment to be fulfilled in what God wants for you. We got different gifts. We got different talents, but we don't have to hate on nobody because we are many members from many backgrounds, from many ethnicities, from many cultures, but we serve the same God. Doesn't matter where you're from. Just don't lose you. Matter of fact, I'm adamant. I'm angry that the enemy is trying to make me lose the best of me. But I'm going to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. And I'm going to ask God to do this. And I'm going to say this. Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I hear the Lord say, I'm repairing broken wings. I'm rejuvenating and reviving crushed spirits. And here's the last note I want to make on this text. And that is, and when she found what she lost, then she calls and called her friends and her neighbors saying, come rejoice with me. So right now I'm telling you, and I'm going to release this out of my mind, mouth and spirit. Break ties with people that can't celebrate you and just tolerate you. We're in a season now to where we need to rejoice for the fact that we still have life. Rejoice for the fact that we have God and actually be excited when others get blessed. I refuse to lose it. And I know you do too. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate God because he's working on the miracle. It's time for your miracle. And guess what? You alone are all we need. I'm going to pray with you right now. I'm not going to lose my soul. What does it profit a man to gain? Amazon, Google, kings, kings, queens, oil, cars, houses, money, gold, silver. And you lose you. I refuse to lose me. And I know you refuse to lose you. Some of you right now up on the sound of my voice. I, there are some folk I sense that are in tears from this word. And I want you to open your heart to Jesus. I want you to open your heart to God. I want you to make it up in your mind that, you know what, today I'm going to start with me. I'm going to start with me. I'm going to start to make sure. Me. So, I, Jesus, I come to you. I come to you with an open mind and an open heart. Wash me. Forgive me of all my sins. I have a Savior. I accept you as you have already accepted me as your personal Savior. I believe Jesus died and rose again and got up with all power in his hand. And I'm washed, I'm changed, and I'm forgiven. Which is a read Romans 10, 9 and 10. He says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You don't have to wait to come to no building, no church building. You could do it right there on the couch. You could be, you, you could be drinking a beer right now. You could be drinking some liquor right now. You could be smoking your weed right now. But God done got to your heart. And you can say, you know what, God? I need to change. I can't lose me. Matter of fact, I almost lost me looking at me. Because I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like what I see. But right now, God, I need you to change me. If you, if you could take somebody like me. And I'm saying to you like Pastor McKnight is saying to you, he took me, so he'll take you. I'm going to pray for you now that you won't lose you. That the creativity of who God wants you to be and the power by which God wants you to perform and go out and become great. There's nothing wrong with being great. As long as you decide not to be arrogant, God don't want you to be prideful and walk around like other people are, you're better than other people. That's, that's why he doesn't shut some of this stuff down. Because some people made themselves gods. And then you had people around them that made them gods because they were godly themselves. But right now God is saying, if you find me, you can find you. If you find me, and you'll find you. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. You're an amazing God. You do amazing things. I thank you for this word. That person that's broken, that person that feels like they won't make it or can't make it, the person who's in bondage, the ones who's in fear, the one who feel like they don't have any more time left, let them know there's still time. There's still time to be whole. There's still time to be complete. I come against depression. I come against oppression. I come against low self-esteem. Break every shackle, break every chain, break every yoke, break every feather. 
and I decree and I declare that there's victory in their lives right now. Satan, we rebuke you for trying to break our will and our spirit. And Thank you, God, that we love you from the depths of our heart. Thank you for loving us when we didn't even like ourselves. Thank you for being patient with us in our struggle. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. And God, right now, we decree and declare that we'll never be the same. And this day is a new day of new beginning. Thank you right now that you wouldn't let us lose it. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you were blessed today. I surely enjoyed this word for sharing with you. It's Pastor Jonathan McKnight. Check with us on www.sanctuaryofpraiseministries.com or you can go to our prayer network, prayer website, www.prayerisamust.org. The last thing you need to do is lose God or lose you. And guess what? We decree and declare that neither one of those things will happen. You are on a brand new journey getting ready to live your best life because we refuse to lose it. God bless you. This is Pastor Jonathan McKnight. Be blessed you and your family. God bless.